Previously on Foundation Season 2, Episode 1. The Cleonic Dynasty is getting weaker and their positioning to merge with Dominion. Gal, Salvador, and Prime Radiant Harry are going to leave Synax. The Foundation in Terminus is developing nicely, but they are heading towards infinite crises. What do you think about today's episode? Foundation Season 2, Episode 2. Uh, I give it a 5 out of 10. I really do love the production values and the cinematography and the acting, but when I get down to it, this wasn't their best episode. It felt very talky, like there wasn't a lot of action, a lot of sitting in a room talking. Uh, and the Gale and Salvor's powers, they seem shoehorned into the story. I'm not sure that it makes sense. It seems like they just sort of need, they get whatever powers they need to make the story move forward. Uh, the future is was absurdly evil and bad, like people hanging from ropes and explosions. It was absurd. Uh, also, the Invictus, uh, is it just hanging out? At the foundation, is it crude? Is it just 130 years of sitting there? Is it going to degrade? Like, what's the what's the deal? We're just ignoring that. Um, and we haven't really seen the foundation grow. Uh, we sort of just we leave the foundation, and then 130 years later, we're back, and it's different, and it's kind of just thrown on top of us. We don't know how did this religious thing come up? How does the traitors come up? What? what how? What? I don't know. It's just we're thrown in. But. Great production, great acting, great cinematography. Love it, but this was not their best. What do you think? Season 2, episode 2. That's a great point about the Foundation. For a show called Foundation, we spend very little time seeing how the Foundation exists. So I give this episode a 4 out of 10. Well, it's low because I want more excitement, but that, that's okay. Because there has to be set up ex episodes for future episodes to have the bang. That's okay. That being said, there are some real inconsistencies with the superpowers that Gale and Salvor and the Vault have. They seem to be just whatever they need powers, you have them. And did Harry plan for Gal to not have a child? It seems anti-psychohistory that he requires the first person in his train of psychohistory to not have any kids. I mean, she, she might she might not. He, he really should not have required her not to. And overall, the story is still super cool. And I'm enjoying the universe, so we'll see where this goes. Mm -hmm. Let's get into today's episode, Foundation number two. Let's do it. Two. The first thing we see at the very beginning is Harry coming out of the Prime Radiant, and he's angry. Why is the plan off course? No. You know damn well. My numbers were predicated on the creation of a second foundation. Second foundation? Who are you? I'm Salvo Hardin. <laughs> the Prime Wrecker has a daughter! So he's setting up this great plan, guiding the galaxy through the dark times. And here comes Gale, the plan wrecker. He's trying to create a home for everyone. She's in there. She's just wrecking. Wrecking. Going around, having kids, random guys like Raish. What the heck? Just wrecking the whole plan. He's trying to build a home for the galaxy. And she's coming in and wrecking it. Also, was Gale pretending to be ignorant of the plan? I thought she fully understood it. My understanding is she fully understood it, but Harry had the real plan in secret in his pocket. But how could Gail truly understand the math if she couldn't see the hidden stuff that... I think he just exposed Gail. She didn't, she didn't really understood the math. Like, like most people in professional environments, you nod and say, yes, I get it. <laughs> you know, that's never, true. Never that's show true. your cards. Yeah. I don't want to be stupid, so I'll just... I totally makes sense. I get Absolutely. It. Yeah, I get totally. it. I'm on board. With a moment's thought, I get it. Yeah. Trivially... So, in the previous episode, Gale and Salvor jump down into the water, swim, 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 turn on the device that makes the ship pop out of the water, and they had no worry that the coral or the salt water or the lack of maintenance or the hole in the side would affect the capability of the ship to pop back out of the water. In fact, Gale was concerned about it, and Salvor was like, not a problem. Not a problem. Coral, not a problem. But now... Their coral is a problem. Let's watch. One of the stabilizers is jammed. Looks like a bunch of coral grew inside it. How did she know that the system that was responsible for making the ship pop out of the water wasn't affected by coral or life or bacteria growth or something? Sounds like she didn't. She just got lucky. My objection is not that coral is causing problems. I'm totally okay with that. My objection is that before she should have been, I, she should have been less confident. She should have said, I think it'll be okay. Maybe, maybe not, but we have to do it. Let's risk it. It shouldn't have been a confident, not a problem. Right. And, they was, would, and they would have had a backup plan if they're like, it's not working, bail, get out, get back to the surface. Instead, they were like fully committed. They were going to go to the death 
to turn on that system, open that thing and turn the thing and, and then pop out of the water. If that didn't work, because if there was coral growth or something, they were going to die. They would have drowned. It's a lot of risk to take. Right. And it turns out the coral is affecting the ship. 130, 130 years or whatever, some long amount of time in the water is going to affect your ship. And this has proven it. It, Looks like a bunch of coral grew inside it. it is affecting the ship, but at the same time, it's super not. Let's look at the pictures. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We got so some inside the here. ship, first of all, super cool design. Love, love it. But it's and it it's pristine in here. This was all underwater for a hundred something years. That's right. And like not a single water drop stain at all. Let's let's go to the next picture. Yeah. Super cool. Super cool. Like padded stairwell thing with the bars on the top. You can grab mm -hmm. whichever you want. But all this padding stuff, just zero degradation. That's right. It's completely clean, smooth. It's as if it just came out of the factory. Heck, it's still white. Is everything like nanite cleaned? Like what is going on in, here? In fact, it looks like the the previous guy, I forgot, I forgot it is. The previous guy, he Hugo. also didn't use this yeah. shit. Even these cushions, the cushions yeah. and the and the seat belts, just pristine. Pristine. Right. If you leave a seat, a car seat out in the sun, it's gonna degrade. If you leave a car seat at the bottom of the ocean. And you pull that seat back up out of the ocean, it's going to be in terrible shape. That's right. My ex's car, she never went to the ocean. It still had <laughs> on it. But if you had nanites, it would have been all cleaned up. Yup. The ship is... St more evidence the ship is tremendous. Look at this precarious situation they're in. Yep. They're on the ocean. This thing is kind of floating. Floating. Maybe. Okay, okay. There's lots of big waves and stuff. No problem. That's a lot of water. That's a lot of mass. And the ship just punches right through it. Punch goes right through oh, an entire wave. Boom. Boom. With some velocity. Yeah. So water is an incompressible fluid for the most part. So when you hit it, it's like, like it's solid. You can push your way through it if you do it slowly. Mm -hmm. But say if you're jumping off of a 200-story building, when you hit water, it's like hitting a concrete wall. It's because it doesn't move out of the way fast enough. That's right. So here they've taken their ship that has been not maintained, has structural integrity problems, at least one hole for sure, mm -hmm. and they just punch right through this massive wall of water. Blast through it. I mean, that's... There's no damage. It's incredible. Okay, it gets worse. It gets worse. So on the outside, Salvor is actually just holding onto the ship. Oh, there's a little bit of coral there. Salvor is just holding onto the ship with what must be superhuman strength. So not mm. only does she see into the past, into other people's lives, she has this grip strength. She has this mm. grip strength and she can just grit her teeth and, and she just takes off just right into the sunlight, hanging on. Hanging on. This is also above the clouds, which means she should be having oxygen problems. Kind of not a problem. Assuming she gets through the wall of water, she's now going to have oxygen problems. She's superhuman. Superhuman. It's unreal. Salver is is an amazing person. Yeah. So she has this ability to look into the past, but also has like the grip strength of a million Arnolds. Oh, it's just gripping, <laughs> gripping the ship apart. <laughs> so back on Trantor, let's get a history lesson. Empress Hanlo, one of the greats. And this gangly child would go on to become Empress Amenity. So this is Empress Hanlo? I think... And uh, this gangly child is Empress Amenitech. Oh. I think that's what it is. I think so. Okay. Her dynasty began 4,000 years ago and ended two millennia later. So this is a 2,000 year long dynasty. Impressive. Far longer than our Cleonic age. Cleons are 400, maybe 500 years at this point. Something like that. So they got 1,500 years to go just to match this old dynasty. It oversaw a blossoming of science and culture. It covered four times the area. Super cool. Super cool. So, so when the show started, I assumed that the Kalyanic dynasty was just like this long-lasting, huge empire, super stable. But we're seeing here that they're actually fairly, fairly new, actually. Mm -hmm. And so that, that gives us some insight to maybe there was some type of political battle, mm -hmm. battles, there was factions, and then the Cleons came out on top. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at this wall, this wall, there's viewing areas, several of them down here. And this wall, assuming there's one important dynasty per viewing area, we're looking at huge numbers of dynasties throughout the ages. The empire has been around a long time. And given that there's like phases of darkness, phases of different empires, this building is standing the test. Yeah. And, so, and I guess the history, the history that's passed down from whoever groups, like it's all continuous. Very so cool. this also gives... Harry's prediction that the empire would fall and it would fall now with the Cleonic dynasty 
is a huge prediction because this wall is so long. That's right. And and potentially behind us from this camera angle, that it is a huge moment in history right now. Mm. All right, here's the still again. So Empress Amenetech. I like whenever they show these these paintings with yeah. all the moving sands. I love it. Yeah, very cool. Super cool. Kind of gives a nice story to the empire. Very cool. Mm. So back on the ship, we hear an explanation of psychohistory from Harry. We're not meant to interfere in the war between empire and foundation. Well, okay. you said the math was off course. Let's fix it. So I really didn't like this line. The math is off course. The math doesn't have a course. It has an infinite number of courses, each with their own little probability. And I think Harry has set up the, found, the galaxy and the foundation and the second foundation to try to make the most probable course the least bad course that gets us back to prosperity. Being off course would mean we're on a lower probability path, but mm. still predicted mm. by psychohistory. So it's, not, it's off course in the sense we're not on the most probable or the best course, but it's a probabilistic statement. So sure. it, it, the fact that, that Salvor thinks it's either on or off is kind of a misunderstanding of what psychohistory says, I think. Right. So I'm, I'm getting inconsistent messages about what psychohistory is. And so, and I think that is showing up in, in Salver's understanding of psychohistory. It makes me wonder if the writers have read the book, because do they understand what psychohistory is? From what I understand about Isaac Asimov was that he was a, he was a PhD. He, he had taken chemistry. Um, he taught, I think he was, he taught like biochemistry or maybe something with animals, but he had his understanding of chemistry. Of, of ideas of macrostates and microstates. When things are so small that you can't see them with your eyes, you have to treat things with only probabilities because you don't know if gas particle A is here or here or here. All you can say is that it's in the box somewhere. So then you assign, well, if there's, a, if there's two boxes, is the gas particle A in this one or this one? Is there A and B and where are they? You start creating a bunch of different possibilities, microstates, that overall end up in an overall state called a macrostate. And so he wrote this idea, Isaac Asimov wrote this idea of psychohistory really f grounded in that idea of probabilities. There is no right state. There's no wrong state. They're just states with different amounts of likeliness or unlikeliness. Mm -hmm. And so Salvor here saying that there's a right and wrong and also Harry not explaining it. It sounds like he also doesn't understand Asimov's explanation of psychohistory. Very mm -hmm. peculiar. Very strange. Yeah, very strange. And I'm not sure they understand what psychohistory is. The writers, I don't know if they understand what it is. Because if we're saying we're so far off the course that we're in such a low probability path that we're going to head in a different direction, psychohistory is not worth a damn. That's right. So it would be that it would be, the, it would be a statement that that Harry Seldon's makes a psychohistory. He says this is the high probability future that I think is best for everyone. But we're already way off course, which means his, his model of how people live in the universe, mm -hmm. in the galaxy, is just completely wrong already. Right. So we could, why, why even use it to make future predictions? It's already off course. We've already got special people left and right. Salvor is a lucky person. Gale's special, feeling the future. Uh, foundation's already off course. Like at, this, at what point do you transition and be like, okay, psychohistory, the predictions are falling apart. Let's not use it anymore. Let it go. Let it go. The future is now, you know, unknown again. Oh, right. well. Let's continue. I mean, they do need to win, don't they? First Foundation needs to be kept in the dark. Introduce too much information into the system and you disturb it, which is why the system required... A second Foundation. Knowledge of the future applied judiciously and with intent to quietly adjust the Empire's course. Now she gets it. Finally. You're talking like Terminus is the enemy. It isn't, not yet. But power corrupts. Foundation left unchecked becomes empire all over again. This is weird to me. Okay, I get it. I get it. So you make a foundation that is supposed to guide humanity into the future. Sure, Foundation 1. But then you say, well, there could be problems with Foundation 1. Say there's some corruption there. They actually might become bad, like the Empire. So we make a second organization, Foundation 2, that checks on them knows what they should do, tells them what to do so that the future is actually guided. But that problem of Foundation 1 being corrupt still exists in number 2. You've just, you just moved it over to the next object, the next organization. In fact, you made them secret so nobody would even know if they're doing anything wrong. 
It, it seems very strange that Harry Seldon would stop at two. I mean, I mean, the, he hasn't actually solved the problem. You would need maybe three or four separate foundations, two, three, four, to check on each other, mm-hmm. then guide foundation one. So, 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 A, does Harry Seldom understand what psychohistory is? Um, B, does, does the, do the writers understand it? And then C, why did he stop at two? Why, why stop at two foundations? And it's even worse than that, because if you stopped at two foundations and the justification being psychohistory, let's stop at two. Psychohistory has been a poor predictive framework. That's right. So now we're justifying two with a terrible predictive framework. Why not? We will unknown how many. Scientifically speaking, it's time to abandon the model. Time to abandon the model. Psychohistory yeah. ain't working. Ain't working. So you see the problem with one, with one foundation is that it could become corrupt. Let's just transfer that to, to two. Justified because psychohistory? But psychohistory isn't making good predictions. That's right. There's no reason that would make the second foundation behave virtuously, truly, in how mm-hmm. psychohistory is supposed to be. Because foundation one was supposed to do that. That's right. Why would foundation two be any better? So, I don't know what Harry's doing. And I don't know what this, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where I, it goes. I, yeah. I like the show, but what? What? Yeah, exactly. That being said, Harry does spit facts. He's spitting some facts. Here we go. They are good people you do not know them like i do everyone you do there is dead nice <laughs> i mean i mean right <laughs> i mean it actually refutes her argument she's like everyone on foundation on terminus they're good people he's like everybody's dead that that's you right know. how can you know that they could drift it they, they could have drifted they have cultural changes uh, you have yeah. no idea what they're like actually i think he's also wrong there i mean prime radiant <laughs> harry wouldn't know that but there is one person still alive it was the boy who is now the cleric but we'll get there that's right we'll get there yeah so He's wrong, but boom, boom, Rex Salvor. Emotional damage. That's right, actually. So, in addition to the problems with psychohistory, we're we're introducing special people left and right, especially Gal and Salvor. Let's watch. I know what all that red in the radiant is. You felt something. Another presentiment. Another presentiment. But this is this is Gail's like special ability to see the future. Harry's just fine with it. That's okay. right. Tell me. Despair, death, destruction. I did this. When I stumbled in on you and Raish, I threw the equations, of course. But maybe those same instincts can steer them back. I felt stronger. So she th- Gail threw the equations off course with her behavior. But the equations should be assigning probability to that trajectory with a low probability because it didn't see it coming but to, to not predict it at all well how good is psychohistory since salvo arrived maybe it's her abilities and amplifying effect abilities you feel the future as well uh, not the future uh, you get some future and you get some future and you get some future and everybody got the future feeling ability sure the past ah past sorry I mean, everyone can feel the past, but it's, it's, it's a weird feel the past of you can feel other people's past. Yeah. It's, it's, so first, I guess, I guess, what is a special person? What do you mean by special person? So I, I'm thinking through the psychohistory lens of everybody is a human and their abilities are a regular human ability. They got a mind, they got hands. They can't do anything like time travel, per, like be a prophet or do something outside they don't have the like realm. Extra healing abilities or right. telepathic telekinesis. Or shoot fire. Mm, maybe optic blasts. So, so just a normal person with normal human abilities. And we see Gale and Salva are special people. Right. So it's actually an okay assumption in psychohistory to have people be people, not X-Men. And psychohistory, my understanding, tell me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Is psychohistory allows for people to be special, to be unusual, to be mm-hmm. extra normal. However, they need to come in very rarely, be mm-hmm. low numbers, and they're, they just shift the future in, in a complicated, unpredictable way. Mm-hmm. Which means that, say, say if you have, if you have a, an arrow or a dart and you throw it in, in, in air, still air, you're in a, inside a room, you expect a nice trajectory. The more special people you have, the more sudden gusts of wind you have. So instead of having a nice arc, you get a you get a you know wiggly not sure. So so the prediction isn't just a, a yes or no. It's a maybe this, maybe this, maybe this prob- high probability this one. Mm-hmm. And as the more special powers, the more 
people that are hard to predict, the less precise that arrow that arrow is, that dart is. It right. gets a, a bigger probability spread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's right. But if you assume a probability of special people... Which needs to be low. Well, if you assume that it's low to make your predictions and it turns out to be not low and it turns out to be very high, it's too meaning you got Gale and Salvor and then Hober Mallow coming up and the Mule. So you got special people coming up fairly frequently. Now your psychohistory model is way mm -hmm. off because you've underestimated how many special people there are. One of the key, the, the fundamental, the key assumptions is immediately wrong. Immediately wrong. It's thrown out immediately. Yeah. Oh yeah, let's watch Remembering Future Memories. Let's watch. If Salvor can access my memories, then maybe my premonitions are the same thing in reverse. Memories my future self has experienced. So are they lawyering the definition of remembering to turn it into a prediction? I mean, right. Salvor's supposed to look into the past and Gale's supposed to look into the future. That's their powers. Now we lawyer talk what remembering and prediction means so that they can both do both. That's right. Okay. I mean, okay. It, it feels like there's no limit to these special abilities. Mm -hmm. there, there are no rules for what they do. They can just do magic stuff. Right. So a prediction of the future is actually a memory from a future self. My prediction for the future is that since Raish was supposed to be the leader of Foundation 2, but since died, there, there's no Foundation 2. Actually, these women are Foundation 2. So, so they, they work in secret from Foundation 1. Foundation 1 doesn't know about them. They have knowledge about the future uh, through, through the, the, history, the memory slash future. And then they also are, are cycle historians. So I, I'm predicting this. I'm predicting this in a few episodes. Harry's going to say, ah, oh, you are Foundation 2. You've been Foundation mm. 2 the whole time. My equation said it was. So, so you're thinking it's not improvised by Harry, but this is the plan all along. Right. That these two women, Salvor and Gale, yeah. are going to become the second Foundation. I think they already are, but he's, he's saying that they're not because... Because Harry seldom, as Gail said, always keeps secrets from you. He has a bigger plan. He doesn't mm, tell you. And it. so here he is guiding them to figure out that they are a foundation too. I see it. And I think that's the organization that they will eventually form in the future that we see in mm -hmm. these premonitions. So this is so far from the books at this point because Gail and Salvor at this point are totally dead in the books. So enjoy this ride. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready for a full X-Men reboot. X-Men reboot. A foundation class. <laughs> well, so this is now we're back on Trantor, and here is Queen Sarath. Sarath the first. Looking good. Looking good. Emperor, looking good. Current and day. Look at those eyes. Look yeah, at that's, a little, that's some chemistry. Yeah. Little flirty flirt. Little flirty flirt. Mm -hmm. But then she's like flirty flirt with, with Dawn. With Dawn. And I see it. Yeah. She's like, Dawn, what's your Dawn like? Yep. And she wants to know. I mean, they're probably what, similar. What they're probably similar Dongus, but. Dong Ai. But you don't know because they're genetic drift. So what if he got the eight inch gene and he got the eight and a half inch gene? You ooh, don't know. Ooh, you don't damn. know. She's like, I That's gotta right. find out. I gotta find out. Would it be would it be cheating if she bangs both of them? I'm gonna say It's the same person, right? And in fact, so, in fact and for that for that matter, let's let's get let's get let's get Dusk involved. I'm pretty sure he's Ooh, down. Yeah, he's yeah down. Look, look at that yeah. smile playing with the beard. I know what that means. So if you're in a relationship with triplets and you bang all three, I, is I, that I, cheating? I, identical triplets. Identical triplets. Identical triplets. I think that means that the same genes. I think it's the same genes. That's, I don't think that's cheating. That's right. So can we look up list of all <laughs> can, we just, can we just do a little quick bing search? Let's, let's, let's not do that. <laughs> so we're wondering where this is going. So they're going to merge Dominion with Empire. And we're still unsure about how different in power these two things are. Empire seems to be way more powerful than Dominion. But not but declining. Sure, but declining. Not sure why Empire feels a need to create an alliance with Dominion or why the alliance doesn't just exist already. Mm. But somehow this is solidifying mm. Empire's rule. We'll see how this goes. And uh, how this relates to the Foundation and how, when Empire finally attacks the Foundation, how will that go down and will Dominion help? Hmm. 
So Day, the current emperor, brings Sarah the First to the this this chamber. I forget the name of this, but it houses the clones for for dawn, day, and dusk. And they say that if Day was to die today, then the next calendar day they would bring up the the day in the middle there. Um, but is this are, th- are these the only clones they have? I mean, if these are the only clones they have, then if I was planning to to kill the day, I would just do it two days in a row. Uh, th- I mean, this is extremely fragile system for the Cleons. Mm-hmm. So a single emperor would be most fragile because mm-hmm. you just need one assassination attempt. So three emperors, dawn, day, and dusk, that's pretty robust. But then if you have only have three, a backup for each of them, so you've got six total, then you would need to kill all three plus their backups. If they're all housed in the same building, uh, maybe bomb the building. Bomb the building. Well, or, we, we, saw, we saw a bunch of embryos, but mm-hmm. those embryos aren't ready to take over. Right. And so, so it looks to me like they have the current active day, the only the one day that's there in the tube, right. and that's it. So, so you so, take out this these two or the mm-hmm. entire building, and the Cleonic dynasty is gone. Right. So I assumed that there was multiple clones mm-hmm. getting information transferred into their brains, probably in multiple locations too. That would be smart. Uh, and that way, the assassination attempts would be extremely hard to pull off because you need to coordinate in different locations and. You know, people have different schedules. It'd be very difficult to do. I mean, I they would, don't say that. I'm filling that blank in. I'm filling in blanks for them. I would put, I would put an extra clone base on the moon. I would put an extra clone base on a different planet. Mm-hmm. I would put a third clone base on a, in a different solar system to to protect you. Right. Another thing I thought about this is if they are also constantly taking the current day's memories and they're streaming it into the clones, mm-hmm. could you reverse that? Could you have a bunch of clones living at the same time, ruling over their separate parts of the empire, and then every day they they upload back to the central guy. I mean, this this is exactly the like Naruto's technique, right? You can get one Cleon, the head Cleon, like really hands in the entire empire that way. Yeah, so you could have multiple emperors all around the galaxy feeding their experiences to to each other as like a network, as like a collective consciousness. So this could be the origin story of the Borg. Borg. But I, I mean, actually, that would really work because then somebody on the far reaches of the galaxy, an emperor, has all the knowledge of what's going on on the inner part of the galaxy and vice versa. So they become this really effective ruling body we, because if you even assassinate one of them, they're all up to speed anyway. They're like, oh, number 47's gone. Weird. Let's, mm-hmm. let's make it, let's activate his clone. Destroy that planet. Destroy it. Even if there's like light speed travel delays, like it's still pretty good. And you get consistent ruling between the different Cleons across right. the galaxy. And we get per- to the point if somebody did want to assassinate the Cleons, like okay. they assassinate one, but they're like, there's 50 more. You like, have to assassinate all of them simultaneously plus their backup clones. Right. It's possible at this point. So this is a good system. I mean, it's got some redundancy, but cool. maybe it could be even better. Oh, yes. We'd engineer the heck out of that. Mm-hmm. So one of the brothers, they describe their religious title. Let's let's decode what that means. You gotta go, girl. The title is brother, novice, cleric, brother constant of the foundation from which all blessings are derived. First thing, what is this guy doing? Doing some little spying? Boop, boop, boop. Getting some little spying? I don't know what that blessings is. Blessings are derived. Imperial spy? We're not sure. Oh, yeah. But also her title, brother, novice. Uh, novice, cleric. Bro- novice, cleric. So she's a trainee under drunk guy. Of the and constant of the foundation from of the foundation which all blessings are derived and constant so unchanging unchanging and all blessings come from the foundation so this kind of came out of left field like who the hell is this cleric of so, the foundation religious people so you tell me what happened in the book but i, I haven't read the book so so from what mm-hmm. i've seen here last in in season two episode season in season one they were like settlers they were just getting determinists they're trying to build up a society and then in between the the seasons the terminus people have become religious fanatics um i guess that makes sense because because harry and Raish and gail were supposed to be the psychohistory experts mm-hmm. and so everyone in the colony was just 
going off of their word. And so they were like just believing it, mm -hmm. which is a religion, I guess. But we don't really see the transition to the religious foundation. We just sort of plunked into the story. Yeah. With, this, this, this is it. They're telling us now. There's like red robes and people preaching to the rim. Like what? I don't so understand. Is this like the entire Terminus culture had become religious? Or is this a subset of the people on Terminus? I, I think... Not, not I think Oh, it's, I don't know if it was clear in the books, but they did a transition to religious scientism hmm. so they could, you know, spread their influence the across the outer rim. Hmm. Okay. So, okay. 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 It's just I would have liked to see the transition from the encyclopedists to the scientists. Scientists, you know, it would have been nice to see how that transition happened and how it made sense within a crisis, but we didn't see it. I was frustrated. The crisis happened in like the background somewhere. We didn't get to see it. Right, we didn't get to see it. In fact, the first crisis, we didn't transition to scientism. So there must have been a second crisis where they transitioned to scientism that we didn't see hmm. while Gail and Salvor were on Synax. So a little frustrating. Okay. Okay, yeah. I guess. And we the cool thing about this is that they do magic now. Greetings. The spirit has come. So, so I, I don't get it. Like they, they have the the mm, auras. So why are they presenting it like magic? Right. It, in the books, I think they're presenting it like magic because they want to create a religion of scientism around the technology. So they're making the people who don't understand science think that it's magic to gain influence in the outer rim. Outer rim. But it's kind of in the show. It's like comes out of left field. Like we're just presenting this technology as magic. What the heck? Where is this coming from? I see. So they're they're trying to convert those local people because to the local people that don't know technology, like the technology mm -hmm. and magic, pretty much the same thing. You can't you can't tell the difference. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, an essential feature of this is that the empire is crumbling from the outside in. So people on the outer reaches of the galaxy are. Not only losing the technology, but forgetting even how it works. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, it's like old tech is a magic. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, but he, why didn't he land? He, he like, <laughs> yeah, play. like, he lands and then, like, runs up the steps. The has come. <laughs> Just land on the yeah. steps. <laughs> what, what are you doing, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Guess he's what? He's drunk. So he's like, oh, the center of the land. <laughs> Yeah, magic doesn't climb stairs. <laughs> Maybe he landed once on the stairs and like rolled an ankle and it was real awful. So this was weird to me. This, this was weird to, to me too. It to me too. Because like I thought I've seen them have screens. I've seen them have small compact technology. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they just make a phone? Like like mm -hmm. this imagine this like ticker tape thing. It could be like, what do you gotta read a paragraph? Like it could be huge. So, so why wouldn't they just do a screen? So I think this is straight from the books. This is how it was presented as they do interstellar communication through this ticker tape. To be fair, the books were written in 1940 something, 1950 maybe. So like this is a prediction of Isaac Asimov. This wasn't quite oh. right. So the writers of the Foundation TV show, they updated the vault. They updated the AI of Harry Seldon. They updated the Prime Radiant. They updated the story of the Empire and the Cleons. But they didn't update this. Hmm. Like, this is an easy thing to update. It's a phone or a, or a tablet or, you know, some other hologram, something sci-fi. This is so weird. It, it's cute, but weird. It's like we read the book, but then they didn't hmm. understand psycho history. Weird. weird. Very weird. weird. Like what if he wants to send him a PDF? That's right. No, no images, only text. <laughs> only text. And it must be pretty short because you got to like... I can't be reading a novel here. Like, whoops. Yeah, it's not like his tool like splits in half and then like one side is writing while the other side is like winding up. It's just, it's limited. Yeah, it's this, weird. Is, this is an easy thing to update to modern understanding of how this technology would work. Let's give yourself one. The cool thing about them, so so they're, they're, the clerics are getting called back to mm -hmm. Terminus. And so they're getting in a ship and I guess they have a three day travel and you don't want to stay awake for this. So on their arms, they have these these buttons. These mm -hmm. sleep buttons. So you just do 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 go to sleep, mm -hmm. and then in the next picture we see them well asleep at the console, which I guess is okay. That's autopilot. 
I just don't don't fall asleep like this. <laughs> uh, your neck could be all damaged for three days. Yeah. Super cool. Super cool technology, especially for, for those of y'all out there that are insomniacs. Mm-hmm. But also, I wonder, like, is that also a vulnerability? A, from being hacked, someone could remotely mm-hmm. send you to sleep. Or B, someone could just grab your arm, like, do, 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 <laughs> and you fall asleep <laughs> and just drag you away. Yeah, so I guess if going up against the backwards people of the Outer Rim, not a problem. Mm-hmm. But if they ever have to go up against the Empire, which they know is coming, this could be a vulnerability. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, weird. Like mm. fist hand to hand combat <laughs> with with the Empire. He's like, do, 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 do. <laughs> you sleep. So back to Gale and Salvor, and like they've got their special abilities, they're just ballooning in capability, and they're not even training or trying new things. They're just like, I'm going to send it back 100 years in the just past. Do just do it. Let's watch. Our turning point. Go there. I'm, I'm afraid if I go there, I won't be able to find my way back. You need. So let's let's go back five minutes, test the waters, see what's going on. Come back. How did it feel? Then try 15 minutes. Then try a day. And then let's Increment. lead up to it. Little we got, jumps. We got time. Actually, let's just send the way back in the day. Send it. Our turning point. Go there. I'm, I'm afraid if I go there, I won't be able to find my way back. You need a lighthouse. A lighthouse. When I'd slip into your memories or races, Hugo's voice used to guide me back. Try listening for mine. 150 years upstream? Why not? I mean, she doesn't have... Okay, first off, Gail doesn't have a hot D to talk to her in the dream state yet. Yep. So like, she's like, you don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> I mean, the lighthouse is a metaphor for Hugo's Dom. It stands up, bing, 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 come to me. And then that's how, it also it's not a lighthouse. It's a voice, it's a yeah. sound house. Sound house. Salvor, I think a little bit. Right, and then, first off, and then don't go back a hundred years right. with the lighthouse. You don't know what you're doing. Just increment this. Like, what little are you jumps. doing? Also, it's weird when they jump. It's not like it's not like she tried to jump two weeks in the future and only got five minutes because it's a brand mm-hmm. new power. It's like she just she does that perfectly. Yeah. So let's watch the future time jump. Mm. The future is absurdly bad. Yeah. Explosions. I mean, look at this. There's people hanging by chains. There's explosions and rubble everywhere. Like, it's terrible. What is going on? I guess a good part is that it looks like Demerzel has brought back the intelligent robots. Right. So super cool. Super cool that the intelligent robots are back. What? Additionally, it looks like that Gale is being hunted by a human, Mm -hmm. which means Gale is working on the side of the intelligent robots and a human has to try to shoot her to stop whatever mission she's doing. So if my prediction is right, then Gale and Salvor, who are Foundation 2 in the future, mm-hmm. they do something where they try to guide the galaxy back towards intelligent robots and humans in the form of this hunter needs to stop her. Right. So this puts this pits the mule mm-hmm. against the robots of Demerzel. Right. So we'll see how this plays out. Curious. Curious how this goes. I'm excited. Yeah. Even more powers! Here we go! They get the psycho telephone. And I can hear... Hear isn't quite the right word, but it's almost like someone's calling to us. Can you hear that? No. Listen. Maybe. Yes. Feels right. Feels right. Oh, found us a new path. Feels right. Salver's like, do you hear that? Gail's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I do. <laughs> she just get gaslighted into believing she has a power. Right. No, who the hell is this? Not only can they, they've lawyered the ability to look into the past and look into the future so that they both have both abilities to look past and future. Now they can look in space. That's right. They can go psycho telephone through space at the same time. So they can look throughout all of space time. And they do it all perfectly, just the first shot. Yeah. There's no like, there's no like struggle and increment and getting better. Right. It's just, just oh, got it. We got somebody on comms. And also, gosh, Harry is right there. Harry's right there. He's a proponent of psychohistory, mm-hmm. and then these two people are just blowing it apart. Like, right. It's just special ability after special ability, special ability, and Harry's just like, yeah, that's cool. Good for him, but he rolls with it. But at the same time, like it's. Antithetical to his life's work. Right. He's like, Psycho History's got this. It's got it. It's got it. Curveball, 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 curveball. <laughs> My life wasn't a waste. 
And the last scene. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Second so this was very interesting. I didn't quite understand what was going on here. There are people wearing black clothing and mm -hmm. people wearing red clothing. Let's zoom in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so black clothing, red clothing. Right, right. And I understand the red clothing is the cleric from from actually back when Salva mm -hmm. was on Terminus. Mm -hmm. um, what's uh, what's going on here? This is a lot. So we've been away from the Foundation for such a long time, and then they're throwing all these big changes like at us. Um, so the red is the religious people, the scientists, and then the black seems like the capitalist traders, and we're in the middle of the transition from scientism to traders. Oh, were they separate groups in the book? I mean, I I don't know if they were separate groups. But or like separate stages? Separate stages. Oh. So we're just introduced to the scientists, and now we're already in transition to the traders, and we haven't even grown with Foundation. We don't know really know the culture. It's just a lot to take in. That's it's confusing. Right. For, for a show called Foundation, we see very little of the Foundation, both just physically and then also in time. Right. So we're spending a lot of time with Empire. We're spending a lot of time with Gail and Salvor and all these important transitions of foundation and maneuvering through crises is we're not seeing it. So this is ultra confusing. Okay. <sighs> and then last thing, why did, why did this happen? What, what's going on here? Why, why did he have to, get vaporized to say a name. Just tell That's him right. the name, be like, Hober Mallow, let's go find him. Why, right. Why did you have to kill him? Mm -hmm. that's, like, that's like me going, hey, uh, I don't know where my friend is. Can you go find him? <laughs> yeah. What? Why yeah. did, what? I mean, it's literally don't kill the messenger. Yeah. And then the next person to be like, uh, what? Maybe I don't want to do that. <laughs> this is a lesson for us to write down in our books to never go interact with the with, with the vault. Yeah. Well, what the world? And then and then on the outside of the vault, they write Hober Mallow. Why don't you just do that? Why don't you just do that? It's weird. Why did he have to die? And in, in fact, if the inside the vault can communicate to outside the vault, why don't they do that anytime in the 138 years? You just give information out to people. Yeah. Weird. So Hober Mallow is so important. You have to kill a dude to know how important he is why is the vault doing that yeah and why not give more information than just the name very strange right, now you gotta go look, look around the galaxy like who the fuck's hober mallow hello like every Dude restaurant died. like is there a hober mallow here oh no no sorry Wait, everyone okay, enjoy your okay. evening yeah why why do you care uh a dude died uh, uh and it was scary like why yeah why do you care dude like i i don't know a guy died guy like, died he said to go find him he said to go find him he died vaporized he was vaporized yeah well what does that have to do with the guy we don't know it just, yeah, we want to know. Hober Mallow, tell us where he is. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 I don't know who Hober Mallow is in the books. My prediction is that he, or he or she, I don't, I don't know. They're going to be someone that's a religious cleric, high value, like high in the society, fully believes in the religious aspect, but they're also a merchant person. So they're going to transition between the two cultures. And but not only that, but they're going to have some like special ability to them to like mm. see into people's minds or hearts or what they mm. want and need. And then they'll perfectly maneuver the negotiations between the groups. Uh, that's my mm. prediction. So maneuvering through a new crisis will require a new special person. Hope mm. Mallow. Yeah. Interesting. We'll see Interesting. where the show goes. We'll see how the show goes. So where do Gail and Salvor go from here? Are they going to start building a second foundation? Are they going to go to Terminus and help them out? We don't know. Oh, will the Empire attack the foundation? We predict yes. I think that's what the guy did with the eyeball. That was a scout from the Empire that was spying on the foundation. Um, but eventually, that's going to come to a head and there's going to be some type of battle. Yeah, and they did bring up Bel Rios, who was in the books, some kind of admiral who helps take on the foundation. So maybe that is coming together. It's a lot of stuff coming together at once. Mm. Uh, it, 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 feels like, it feels like foundation was not renewed for a third season. So they're like, let's just get it done all Pile around. it in. <laughs> Pile it in. Send it. Speaking about getting it in, are the queen and the empire going to bang? Most important question. Are they going to bang? Are they going to bang? And, and how, how many? How many? How many? What? How many at the same time? Sequential? Sequential. And where is the second foundation? Is it Gale and Salvor, or is it another organization somewhere else?
I don't know. Unclear right now. Harry is holding his cards close to his chest. Join us next time. Season three. Season three. Season two, episode three. See ya.